Hey guys, I have an art supply to share with you. This is called Distress Spray Stain by Tim Holtz. It's a water reactive ink. It comes in a plastic spray bottle. You can mist this over your project to get a splattered ink effect, but that's not the only way to use this. There's many, many different techniques, but that's not what this video is about. I am going to show you what these colors actually look like. Okay, so I own 27 colors. These come in like 60 colors plus metallics. I own all the metallics, so I'll be able to show you guys those. So let's get started. I'm going to push these to the front. I have some mixed media paper here. I'm going to, you know what, let's go ahead and start with the metallics. Okay, the metallics have a little ball inside. Now you can hear it when I shake it up. Make sure you shake these up because the pigment will settle to the bottom. I guess that's good enough. Okay, so I'm going to actually just open the top, okay, and dip my brush right in. And there. That is so beautiful, guys. Okay, these are my favorite. The metallics are my favorite to use because they have a beautiful shine to them. I'm gonna pick this up so you guys can see. And this is best used if you just spritz it because you get that beautiful like metallic uh, splatter everywhere. I love that. But I'm just showing you what the color looks like today. Okay, I'm gonna move this to the side and let's grab the gold. Okay, this silver was called brushed pewter and this is called tarnished brass. I'm gonna swirl it around. Okay. I'm gonna clean my brush. I love Tim Holtz's color palette, guys. If you've never heard of his dis distressed, it's kind of a tongue twister, um, his distressed colors, oh my gosh, guys, go check it out because uh, it's just, it's so fabulous. If you like muted colors, you would love Tim Holtz. Now, it's a crafting paint. You can use it however you want. You, I mean, don't limit yourself with your art supplies. But it is a crafting paint. Um, but I still love it. The, the colors are fabulous. Okay, so that was called burnt, uh, Tarnished Brass. Oh, I love that. I love that. I love brass and bronze better than, I, uh, than gold. Just fabulous. Okay, now this one is the Antique to Bronze. Do I have all the metallics? I thought there was a copper. Hmm. Now I'm gonna have to go and look. I thought there was a copper, but maybe not. All right. So here's the antiqued bronze. Okay, dry my brush. You do have some bubbles when you um, when you shake it up a bit, but that's okay. They go away. That's so cool. Okay, I'm gonna pick this um, my paper up again so you guys can can see it. Look how beautiful those colors are. Fabulous. Okay. Now you can let them dry and then put another layer on top if you want, if you're gonna be using a brush. More than likely, you're gonna just spray right out of the, um, mine's all got stuff all over it. Um, you can just spray just like that to get that beautiful splattered effect, which is really kind of the purpose of these. But like I said, you can use them any way you want. But make sure, guys, you see that little, the little hole right there where the paint comes out of? Every time you use this, go ahead and wipe it down with a, a damp cloth or something just to make sure it stays unclogged. Okay, so now that we have our metallics done, we can start with the colors. Now I want to say, this is the white. It's called Picket Fence. This also has a little ball inside because the white, the pigment, will all settle to the bottom of this one too. I normally don't swatch white, but I'll go ahead, since this is off-white paper, 
go ahead and swatch a little bit just so you guys can see it's very very fluid very fluid but you can definitely see and you see I got a couple splotches on here it if you like that look of splattered white on um, on your artwork you might want to pick this one up this is fun okay now let's get to the colors now you see it's drying down and it's just like disappearing on this paper because it's soaking in so if you're looking for a really thick white I would suggest maybe the Windsor and Newton drawing ink that I did yesterday because that has more of a more body to it than this this is more of a much more fluid um, product okay so let's get to the colors this is called faded jeans I'm gonna shake it up a bit but you really don't have to this this is an ink consistency guys this is definitely ink and you know now that I'm using this I'm thinking maybe I should have used see this is mixed media paper but I could let me go grab a piece of um, I'm gonna grab some um, watercolor paper so you guys can see what it looks like on watercolor paper See, this paper is much more absorbent so this is mixed media paper and this is watercolor paper and I'm going to show you guys the difference how it's really going to absorb differently and you can um, you can actually use this as like a liquid a liquid watercolor you can put this on a palette add a little bit extra you know water to it and use it that way too so you can think of it as like a liquid watercolor um, if you want it'll work it's it's a uh, you know it works with water okay see here's the difference it soaks in much faster on watercolor paper than it does on the mixed media paper and you know what I'm gonna do I'm gonna grab some watercolor paper because I really think I want to show you guys on this grabbed a couple sheets just in case I'm gonna go ahead I'm gonna go ahead and do that let me go ahead and and do this color over again I never know what's gonna happen so, you know things just plans change sometimes when you start filming look how fabulous that color is oh my gosh guys like I said, his color palette is really, really good. Okay, so that is a blue color. Let me grab some more. I'm going to turn these around. I'm going to try to grab color families. That might be easiest. Um... Oh, God. <laughs> There's so many bottles. At least I don't have the 60. Gosh, if I had the 60, oh, we'd be here for a while. Okay, but I do love these, and... I would like to get more of the colors. Okay, this one's called Stormy Sky. Oh, I love this. This is beautiful. Oh, that little ring thing came off. Let me put that back on here. That's the little seal. Okay. So this is Stormy Sky, guys. So pretty. This blue has, like, gray in it. I love that. I love that. Okay. And I have Broken China. Look how beautiful that is. Okay. And I have Chipped Sapphire. And I think those are the only blues that I own. Look how dark and intense that is. Isn't that fabulous? Guys, another, another um, thing I, I'm thinking of right now is you can, this is so intense, you can actually mix this into uh, gesso or other kinds of media to, you know, make different colors with it. Uh, just, it's just so fabulous. But look at that. Look how intense that is. I love this. 
these are so good okay I think that's the um, those are all the blues that I own so let's go ahead and start with my greens well oh, that's not green um, here's green this is called forest moss okay get all the blue out of my brush okay oh so fabulous guys this is so fabulous look at that intense like an olive green color and that was forest moss okay now we have crushed olive It's a little bit lighter olive green. And uh, now this is called peeled paint. Oh, isn't that fabulous? This is like a, um, a sap green. And uh, shabby shutters. Oopsie. Get all the green out of my paintbrush. Okay, much lighter, but it's still that muted, beautiful green. Oopsie. Let me get this ink off before it dries. Okay, I think, I think that's all the greens, but I found a blue. And this is called Iced Spruce, and I, another color that I just love. This is very gray blue. It's like a stormy sky. I love that. I love that. Iced spruce. Beautiful. Okay, now let's go, let's do our yellows. Let's go ahead and do our yellows. This is called Fossilized Amber. Okay. Oh, I'm getting it on my hands. Look how beautiful. That is so fabulous. I love that. That's a good color. Okay, now we have, um, we'll, we'll do this one, Wild Honey. Okay. I think that's the only... No, I have an orange. I was thinking that was my only orangey. That's between, that's between an orange and a yellow. Okay, now this one, this is antique linen. I'll leave that with the browns. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and do this one. This is rusty hinge. And then we're gonna have to get another piece of paper. That's the orange that I own. Okay, I'm going to move this to the side and I'm going to grab my, my other piece of paper. Let's start with the reds and I only have two reds here. Okay, this is called Born Door. This is a brighter red. red that I have is called Fired Brick. Now all of these colors match um, the other colors from his uh, markers to his um, uh, crayons to, to all. It's the same color palette so they all can interchange with each other which I love. Okay so this was called Fired Brick 
and I love this red. That is a beautiful, beautiful red. Okay, now we have some purples. Okay, this is called Victorian Velvet, and I love this. This is so beautiful. Okay. Oh, there's something in there. What was that? I don't know. It was just a little, what is, what, there's just like, like a skin on the top of it. It was like a little, I don't know what that was. Yeah, let's go ahead and put it on here. That was weird. It looked like there was like a little skin, but I guess not. Maybe it was just my brush. Okay, guys, so that is the Victorian Velvet, and I love that. That is a beautiful, beautiful, um, soft, muted lavender. Okay, so this is called Seedless Preserves. Now, when I was buying these, I just kind of uh, went through his color palette because I do own all of his colors in different media, but I just kind of went through all of them and said, okay, which one of his purples is my favorites? Which one of his reds are my favorite? And I just went like that. I just chose the ones that suited me best. Um, but eventually, I'll probably get all the colors because they're just so beautiful. Okay, let's go ahead and do the browns now. This is the lightest one. It's called Antique Linen. Make sure my brush is clean. Okay, it's a very soft um, tan color. And the next brown is called Brushed Corduroy. Let me put that there. Uh-oh, guys, the dog's on his way over to visit. I hear him coming. Okay, so that is Brushed Corduroy. And, oh, this is a dark brown. This is called Ground Espresso. Let me clean my brush. Look how dark and intense that is, guys. There's a really dark brown. Now, if that's too dark for you, like I said, you can always water it down. Hello, darling. Hello. <laughs> okay. Um, you can always, you know, add a little, if you're using it like as a watercolor, you can always add a little bit of water to it and bring it down just a bit. All right, well, let's go ahead and do our gray colors, and then we'll end with the black. This is called Weathered Wood. And I can't remember, is this a blue or a, wet or a gray? Let's see, blue or gray, let's find out. I'm kind of thinking it's a blue-gray. Yep, it's a bluish gray, guys. Look how fabulous that is. Love that. Okay, and then we have pumice stone. Oh, I hope I can fit everything on this paper. I think I will. Now this is a green gray. This is, uh, it's pumice stone, but you can see it's definitely like a green gray. And then we have Hickory Smoke. Guys, the dog is eyeballing me right now. He's like, are you gonna let me out? Hopefully he'll be patient and I can finish this. Okay, this one's called Hickory Smoke. This is a, um, a gray color. My swatches are getting kinda weird, but I can fit one more color, guys. We can do one more on this. Okay, and this is called Black Soot. This is our black. Okay, I'm gonna dip into that. All right, and look how intense that black is, guys. That's fabulous. It's a really good, intense black. 
All right, so I'm going to bring um, both of these color palettes in so you guys can really have a good look at them. Look how fabulous that is. I don't even know if I'm getting all this on camera, which I doubt I am. Let me just show you one at a time, just to make sure you guys can see everything. Oh, let me turn it around like this. Okay, so here are, now remember, these aren't all the colors. These are just the ones that I own. There are at least twice as many colors in this in his palette. But these are just so incredibly beautiful. I love Tim Holtz's color palette. Love them so much. I think, I honestly think Tim Holtz's color palette is my favorite color palette of all the paints and everything that I own. I just love his colors. Okay, so here are the blues and the greens and the oranges. And then we have the reds, some a couple browns, the purple, oh my God, look how fabulous these two look together. The, this is that uh, Victorian velvet and this is that purple. This is called um, Seedless Preserves. These are just so beautiful. Here are the grays, and uh, that, that's actually, that looks black on camera. I know it does, but it's a dark brown. So fabulous. All right, guys, and you know what I'm going to do really quickly? Let's go ahead and swatch those metallics again on this watercolor paper so we can see the difference. Okay, so we're going to start with the silver, and I'll give it a good shake. Clean my brush again really good. So the last color I used was that black. Okay, we're going to see if it looks any different on this absorbent watercolor paper. So fabulous. Now remember guys, this is very fluid. It's not thick, you know, because it's going to spritz out of this little, you know, nozzle right there. But it's so good. I hope you guys can see the shine on that. Okay, and the next one is called uh, Tarnished Brush. The silver is called Brush Pewter, and this is called Tarnished Brass. Clean my brush. Let me get a little bit more. See, now I have less of this than anything else because I normally just grab that because I love the effect of the splattered metallic. Okay, and then the last color we have is Antiqued Bronze. Okay. Ooh, got a lot on there. And there we go. Beautiful. Okay. So let's look at them one more time. Here are the metallics and that blue that I first swatched. Love that. I recommend to use the metallics. Well, you can use them however you want, but my favorite way is to get that splatter, that just splatter of metallic all over um, it on top of whatever you're doing. It's just beautiful. So I love that. Remember, these are water reactive. Look how fabulous that is. Guys, I just love this. I'll just say it again. These are a huge thumbs up from me. I love Tim Holtz's color palette. Look how fabulous that is. So pretty. So pretty. All right, guys, I hope you've enjoyed this um, swatch video. I hope you've enjoyed these colors. I have to go let the dog out now because he's starting to to cry. <laughs> I'll see you guys later. Bye!